Hello everyone. Before we start our podcast, let me tell you about something I'm really excited about, and it is a React Native EU conference that is happening 1st and 2nd of September this year, so in around two months. So what I can tell you is that we'll have amazing lineup of, this, of speakers for you, and don't wait up, book your spot for the conference now. You can find the link in the description below. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the React Native Show podcast. I'm Łukasz, your host, and in this episode, we'll talk about Paper, an amazing UI kit library, homegrown here at Colstack, using only the most ecological and friendly materials. And with me today is Łukasz Walczak, who is actually our main contributor to Paper right now, and he has just released version 5 of this amazing library. So, Łukasz, welcome to the show, and uh, please let us know how you how your story with Paper started. Hey, at the beginning, uh, thanks for inviting me to the podcast, especially to this brand new studio, which looks so cool. Uh, I'm Luke, I'm software engineer at Callstack and open source contributor in the free time. Uh, my journey with uh, Paper has been started four and a half years uh, ago, uh, because basically I wanted to develop more and more my React Native skills, but I was looking also for some kind of springboard from client's project. So I assume that contributing to the open source project can be enjoyable. And yeah, that's, that's how I started, uh, the journey with React Native paper. Okay. Awesome. Um, so paper has been on this podcast before. I'm not sure how how long ago, but it was around two years ago. And I wasn't a host back then. You weren't a guest back then. So uh, maybe you can tell us what has changed in paper since that time, since two years ago. OK, so firstly, let's recap what the paper is. Basically, React Native Paper is the cross-platform UI kit library containing a collection of customizable and production-ready components for React Native, which are following the Google's material guidelines. Uh, from the last episode, monthly downloads increased from 200,000 to more than 400,000, and currently we have almost 4 million downloads per year. Awesome. That, that's like, that, that's astounding numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You work on some very, very big project right now. Yeah. And uh, the next difference is uh, I think we are getting more open for customizing components. There are still two ways to do that by theming and style pro, but we are adding more detailed properties in some components such as uh, label style or custom size and, and so on. But by default, components are strictly following the guidelines. We fixed a lot of bugs, improved the accessibility, introduced even more features uh, like props for customizing components, and implemented some new components. Uh, yeah. OK. So um, you said that Paper is a UI kit library that follows standards set by Google in their material design principles. Um, so how do I go about theming it? Can I, what can, what can I do about theming the, the, this? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, theming configuration contains the uh, set of colors along with typographies, uh, which are following the material design, but there is an option to customize it and tailor it to your needs to your design requirements. OK, yeah, great. Um, another question that I have about paper is, and I, I know the answer, but <laughs> I, I want you to say it. Uh, why would I want to use the UIKit library in my products, basically? Why use 
a UIKit library, and then why uh, do you have to choose paper? Mm -hmm. uh, currently, paper, paper is quite popular, I think, uh, due to the following material design, which assumption is to provide a simple and consistent uh, graphic style. And that design system is used across the apps created by Google, and its popularity is growing all the time, hence the greater interest to, uh, in our uh, library. Uh, from developer perspective, I don't like wasting the time, and paper fits into that concept. It allows you to save the time which you would have to uh, spend on building and styling components from the scratch. With paper, all you have to do is basically fulfill the components uh, custom functionality, which speeds up the development process. Uh, yeah, so basically you can release your app much faster in, if you don't have to write all the functionality from scratch. You don't want to reinvent the button every time you start a new project. You can use the one that paper provides and you can be sure that it is consistent with uh, material design um, design language, basically. Yeah, it's, perf it's perfect for the case where you are creating an a prototype or MVP where you want to uh, mainly focus on logical layer of your product and great visual layer is just provided. Okay, yeah, 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 definitely. And uh, what about in the like, next phases of uh, application lifecycle? When I release my app, I want to make sure that it is accessible. So what does paper provide in that area? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be myself if I didn't mention about the accessibility. We are doing our best to provide components accessible to everyone. So we take care about the compat compatibility with the screen readers and also right to left languages. Okay, cool. Um, uh, another question that I have, and this will wrap up the recap of what is paper is, can you share <laughs> some trade secrets of paper library about the companies that that use your library on like day to day in their products. Uh, yeah, I think we have we have uh, in um, paper documentation we have uh, um, a section called showcase where uh, contributors can add their apps and basically presents what they achieved with uh, React Native paper, but. Uh, we uh, have this knowledge that some famous companies and organizations like CERN uh, is is using it. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is the one that I heard, and that is the one I want uh, that I wanted you to tell us about. Okay, um, so let's finish our wrap up about what paper is and how it can help you with your uh, with, with your project. To hear more about it, you should really go look to listen uh, into the previous podcast about it. We'll link that uh, in the show notes. But in this podcast, we'll move on to our next topic because you said that um, paper is a library that implements material design for you. So can you briefly talk about what material design is and what is the new material you design and how uh, that all ties together? Okay, so let, let's split your question into two points. Yeah, uh, thanks. First, first, material design is a design language, an adaptable system of guidelines, components, which supports the best practices of user interface design. Second, Material design, otherwise known as material design free, is the third and the latest generation of material design. And material, de material U is providing the new visual style and set of features embracing, embracing uh, personalized user needs. OK, yeah, thanks, thanks for that answer. So in version 5, 
of paper, which is new version released just a few days ago. And depending on when this podcast is going to go live, maybe a few weeks ago. Um, can you tell us how you've implemented the new material design, material U, into paper V5? And can I still use the old material design, material design V2, in V5 paper? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So again, let's split it into two questions. Uh, <laughs> can I use a uh, previous version, let's say Material Design 2, in the latest version of React, pa React Native Paper? Yes, you can. Uh, at the beginning, when Material U has been released, I was receiving different and divided op personal opinions about uh, new design generation. However, it was clear for us as a team that Paper certainly supports would certainly support Material U. I think it's it's better to have a choice, even if we believe that you should follow the latest trends. Uh, since changes mainly concern vis visual aspect, followed uh, followed by uh, API changes such as uh, supporting new props, extending or renaming the existing one, and even some deprecation, we decided to, let's say, it's not a big deal to support both versions. However, right now we have to test changes on three platforms, two modes like an light and dark, and two versions. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, maybe maybe let's go to the the second point: update process. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah. So sorry. Maybe maybe before we go into the update process, uh, we can uh, talk some more about. Um, how do you get your hands on your product? How do you test it without actually going to npm install part? Because you can uh, take a look at all of the changes that you just said, two different teams, uh, three different platforms, and like two different uh, material design versions, and you can actually see them live in one application, correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, there is an option to download the React Native Paper example app from the App Store and Play Store. Uh, and in this Showcase app, you are able to uh, show and play with the components which are in the library. You can switch the uh, mode, you can switch the version, and basically observe how the components are changing be between uh, modes and, and versions. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And um, in as the last part of the show, what I want to do is I want you to show our viewers on YouTube and our listeners. Maybe we can um, we can describe what we are seeing. Maybe we can like quickly go through the whole showcase application to actually actually show uh, the paper library without people even have to go into Play Store or anything like that. Uh, but that's that's an extra at the end of the show. And right now we should move to update process. Because what I've heard is that you didn't rebuild the whole application from scratch. You didn't rebuild the whole the all of the components from scratch, and you just have some kind of like refresh process to, to all of it. Can you speak something to that? Uh yeah, basically. Uh, we uh, we set some principles at the beginning of uh, the update process that we are going to uh, keep everything within uh, the same files. Like we won't create something new. Uh, we'll just implement uh, the new, let's say, style uh, layer um, using the ethology and cover it <laughs> by, by that. <laughs> and uh, you can see all of the ethology that uh, that Wukash made in our repository for this project, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm I'm eager to see to see all, all, all of the ifs. Um, I've heard this expression when we when we were preparing for this podcast. You told me that you use that you use something that is called design tokens. And you were eager to explain it to me back then, but I said, no, 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 wait for the podcast to be live. And then <laughs> then you can uh, explain to me what are the design tokens. 
Okay, yeah, sure. So a uh, quick definition. Design tokens are the keys which represents the small repeated design decision that make up a design system visual layer. Uh, their role is to replace static values such as uh, hex codes or colors with self-explanatory names. But it doesn't have to be only for the colors, but typography, spacing, or So size. sorry, when we talk about colors in design tokens, uh, like terminology, you mean like primary, secondary, stuff like that? Yes, exactly. And okay. even even two more uh, variation, like on primary and on primary container, uh, and the same for secondary, tertiary. OK. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Basing on the tokens, it's it's crucial in my opinion, since it's uh, your one and only source of true, especially if it comes to the theming, and using them across the code base, simplify maintaining, updating, or even building a product. Now imagine that new material design generation will be released in two years. If they will keep the same naming, it should be quite easy to update the styles. Yeah. Yeah, because like you, you, you still have your primary color and you have still your secondary and accent colors. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that explanation. So, um, do you recommend people to use the the new version, the new V five version, and do you recommend them to switch to new Material U design, or and how that, uh, how will this process? Um, look like for the library users? Uh, basically, you have to follow the migration guide if you want to uh, install the latest React Native Paper version. Uh, I think we can, we can link it to the video description. Uh, and yeah, migration has to be started from updating the theme. For those who want to keep the old material design, there is a need to add the property in the theme configuration called version uh, with the value two, since it's second uh, material design generation. However, if you want to play with the latest version, you can go straight to updating color palette structure, since material U is a default in React Native Paper v5. Okay. In, the next, okay. in the next steps, uh, users have to check how uh, components API has been changed and update them accordingly in their code base. Some props are deprecated, some are renamed. Uh, basically, everything is described. And I think uh, it should be um, quite easy to, to adjust to the uh, latest version. OK, yeah, awesome. Um... So you know what? Like I'm out of the questions for like the paper part, for the material UI part, material design part, and for the whole uh, library part. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to speak about? So now is the place for that. If I forget forgot something, uh, let me know and 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 just speak about it right now, and then we'll go to a live demo showcase. Uh, I think we can, uh, for a while, we can go back to the uh, update process because you asked it, but I, I didn't manage to answer that question. Okay, yeah, sure, definitely. Sure. Uh, yeah, so as a team, we started from internal workshop uh, based on the resources which we had, uh, such as new documentation and Figma kit. We were able to go through the, each component and mark the most important points in the form of uh, let's say comparison table. For example, uh, we we mark differences between v2 and v5. Uh, documentation already did that. Uh, however, we were considering those changes from the code base perspective. Uh, also, several components received new variants or modes, so we were discussing how to adjust their naming, and uh, yeah, we were looking for some compromise between being consistent with the code base and new material design. Um, on the same meeting, uh, we set some principles and discussed the, the strategy, 
how to approach the process. So uh, I want to stop you here right now and ask maybe uh, one follow-up question to something that you said. You said about the meetings that you have when you plan the whole upgrading of the library. So how many people are involved in in those meetings, in like the life cycle of this library? How many people do do we have there to maintain it? Uh, yeah. On internal workshop, we had a group of four people and in the same group you were working on on that process. Uh, but we have also a couple external contributors which are helping us with triaging issues or answering uh, people on our Discord channel. Oh yeah, definitely. And we want to thank this, uh, take this opportunity to, to thank all of those people and maybe we will uh link the repository in the show notes so you can go in there and like browse around and maybe you can contribute maybe you can see what other people are contributing um yeah sorry <laughs> sorry for interrupting you and you were saying you had internal workshops and please move on yeah so uh we were as i said we were discussing some kind of strategy how to uh, approach the process and yeah, uh, on this on that meeting, we uh, we said that we are adding new property to the theme, which indicates which version of material design should be run. Uh, that we are keeping new implementation with the, within the same files, and uh, and this and we introduced this kind of ethology and is v five boolean check, and uh, also uh, we um, we are adding a note. We were adding a note to uh, to the refined prop by annotation supported in version five with version three, or renamed from something to something in version five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is very important when you browse around in the application. I, I want I want my uh, developer environment to show me on Hoover uh, the. The hints about the properties. So, so that's great. It's really, really important to to think about commenting your code in that way, so that developers can have the best developer experience. Yeah, and uh, also, also documentation is is presenting this uh, kind of information in form of uh, label next to the prop name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. And uh, something that I want to to mention to something that you previously said is that I feel like it is a great idea to keep both material UI, material design um, 2 and material design 3, which is material U, in the same paper implementation, because maybe people would still want to use the old material uh, 2 design, and but at the same time use the the newest version of paper available with the newest back fixed and, and and so on and so on. So so it's great. I think you can make a comparison to a new architecture of React Native, right? So that uh, library maintainers that want to um, should basically keep the two implementation at this in the same library right now, so that people with new architecture disabled and enabled can still use your application. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, it also our our intention to uh, to have both uh, versions uh, in in both material design versions in one paper version just to uh, just to be sure that our bug fixes, as you said, will be provided for the whole group of users. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned you have three platforms. So it, it's Android, definitely. Android is the home ground for material design. It is iOS, some kind of like foreign design language, but still a lot of iOS applications use material design. What is the third platform? Yeah, the third platform is, of course, web. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, thanks to React Native, web we are able to to handle that yeah 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 okay okay uh shall we summarize this then shall we summarize the paper the v5 the material u 
and move on to your <laughs> your live demo showcase. Oh yeah, we didn't man like when when we do the the live demo showcase. Uh, you can actually, dear listener, dear viewer, go to Google Play Store or um, Apple App Store and download the application and play around with us, right? Yeah, sure. What's the what's the showcase demo app name? Uh, React Native Paper Example. Okay, I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> I will do it with you. Uh, but yeah, so. Thank you so much for being here. This was the podcast part. We were talking about new version of paper, V5. And in, what's new in V5? We've implemented, we, like like I did something. Wukash and his team, they've implemented uh, Material U, which is new version of Material Design. And you can use both versions, Material Design 2 and Material Design 3 in React Native Paper. And you can switch between them with just one simple if. Uh, yeah. And thanks so much for listening. And now we will move on to the extra part of this episode, something that we've never done before, which is live, <laughs> live showcase of the demo application. So, Wukash, can you share your uh, screen? And I'm going to go to my Google Play Store and download the, uh, the showcase application. Yeah, sure. It's going to be quiet for a while, so probably we'll make like a ch -ch -ch, uh, <laughs> cut here. <laughs> yeah, so let, let me know when you have the app on your device. Uh, yes, I have React Native Paper example. And yeah, Coldstack.io. 5k downloads uh awesome and i'm installing it right now it can take a while so like go ahead is is that the home screen of the showcase application yeah exactly okay so in the top left corner we have uh this uh button hamburger menu let's say button yeah uh which after the press it's opening the there were items. Uh, there were there were uh, stack and with there were items, and yeah, here we have a couple of options how we can uh, change the uh, the example up. So basically, we can press the s switch the dark theme, and yeah, we have all the components in uh, dark theme. Yeah. Uh, another aspect here uh, worth to mention is that we can switch to Material Design 2. And we can go back to the light theme. And yeah, this is the this is the old material design called 2. Uh, so maybe maybe for, for listeners that aren't watching on YouTube, what we have here is basically a um list ordered alphabetically of all of the examples of components that you can use in React Native Paper. So when you scroll to the top, can you scroll to the top, Wukash? Yes. So it starts with animated floating action button, so FAB, F-A-B, and it goes through activity indicator, up bar, avatar, and at the very bottom there, there is team, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. And when you press any of those uh, list items, you are taken to a new screen with basically an example of this component. Yeah. So maybe uh, what we could do now is you can show us, you know this best, so maybe you can uh, think about the most visible example of changes between Material Design 2 and Material Design 3 in one of those components, and you can showcase it right now, what has changed in, mm -hmm. that, in that component. OK, so I think uh, we can start with bottom navigation. So yeah, at the bottom of the screen, we have four tabs be between which we can uh, switch. And what you can observe here is 
uh, the repel ripple effect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the the label is coming into uh, be visible, and uh, each tab uh, has specified uh, different color. And right now, go to the uh, material design free and bottom navigation. Here at the first side, you can notice that bottom navigation is a bit higher uh, mm -hmm. and the differences between two modes. First of all, uh, in active uh, icon is uh, switching to from outline to fulfill icon. Uh, at the same point, um, behind the icon, uh, the the shape, the pill shape, um, is appearing, and there is there are no colors like all the tabs yeah, yeah. at the same style. If I can say something about this, what strikes mm -hmm. me is so this is V three, right? This is materially U. Yes, this is much more mm, modern. What I, I would say, the, the previous one, the material design too, was like this candy style, was this, this like very pastelish colors, a lot of animations going around, like yeah. things popping out, increasing in size and, and all that. And this is really clean, really readable um, new approach to this. I, I would say new version is more mature and simpler. At the same yeah, time. yeah, it is simple. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And what's what strikes me about this material, like material design concept as a whole, is it is it's a good way for Google actually to um, to make people familiar with their products. Because when I look at this screen that you are showing right now. I can definitely see like my Google Photos app that I use all the time. I use Google Photos. This is very, very similar. And like, I think it's a very smart move from their side that like you open the applications and they all look similar and you feel comfortable in like Google ecosystem as a whole. Right now we can go to uh, animated floating action button and that screen can remind you uh of, uh, of gmail, gmail. <laughs> definitely yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah exactly. so yeah uh our motivation for um, for this animated floating button was basically to do uh the same component which is used in in gmail and uh basically it behaves the same when we are scrolling at the top the button is extended when we when we are scrolling a bit uh, in in down, uh, the the button is shrinking. Yeah, and yeah. Also, awesome. you can here you can change because we did, we we noticed that sometimes uh, the icon is moving and the the uh, icon is moving to the left side, uh, and sometimes it can be static. So yeah, mm -hmm. we implemented also two modes, uh, basically to uh, adjust to, to the user needs. Just API is, is more uh, customizable. Yeah. This Can you show how the FAB works in previous material design version? Can you, can you, can you change the, the setting? Yeah, sure. Uh, the behave is really similar, uh, but the shape is different. The shape is definitely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can also go to the next example, Google example, let's say. So here we have component called Fab Group. Uh, and also in the latest version, uh, the animation is a bit different. Uh, and yet we were trying to, to follow it. So at the first, uh, the first side, you can notice the, the floating action button has uh, different Border radius. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's not it's not the circle anymore, uh, and yeah, there is different animation and uh, different uh, backdrop color. So maybe maybe let me ask you about this. So you are basically re-implementing um, the visuals 
based on documentation, right? Based on some kind of standard. Mm-hmm. Are so, and I can imagine that um, border radius, um, some kind of f- font scaling, all of that is described, paddings, margins, all that. But are the animations described as well in the standards? Uh, to be honest, uh, I think there is no, maybe there is native specification which you have to. Uh, follow like you have to do some kind of reverse engineering uh, and I was basically following the uh, the live example from the uh, Google Apps and trying to to mimic the same behavior okay okay so you reversed engineered it then <laughs> yes yeah yeah okay okay uh great demo great demo uh do you do you want to showcase so, something else that you feel that will uh be um, beneficial to our viewers and listeners if we can describe it uh Good. yeah we have one uh one more new component which is collapsed drawer so it's more like web uh components component but i think it it can play well with with tablets, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Thanks so much. Uh, so again, I've downloaded it. It's called React Native Paper Example, <laughs> and the company that put it on the Google Play Store for the Android phones that I have is Colstack IO. Uh, you can find us on. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you can find us on YouTube. Our uh, our website is callstack.io or callstack.com. Uh, I'm Mukash, and I'm a host of this podcast. And with me today, with also an amazing name, Mukash Valchak, uh, contributor to, to Paper, and Paper is V5 now. Thank you, Mukash, so much for joining me today. Thank you. It was a great time to... Uh, meet with you on that podcast. Talk about the uh, talk about the paper and material you. Yeah, amazing job, man! Like I'm really impressed with the download count that you have, with all that that you re-implemented, that you re-engineered. Very, very good job. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it won't be possible without a great team. So thank you, team, for the help and support. Yeah, let's let's link all of the people involved in the in the show notes. Let's give them some credit. Definitely. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks.